Tune into the 5AA Breakfast Show next week and listen out for Keith's clues to a significant South Australian location and be the first caller through with the correct answer to win a $250 Snowy's voucher. All thanks to Snowy's. Outdoors made easy since 1995, Richmond Road, Keswick and 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Interactive Radio. Email on air at 5AA.com.au. Peter Godfrey. All right, time to head across the ditch, as they say. New Zealand is where we're headed. In fact, Auckland, New Zealand. Selwyn Manning from LiveNews.co.nz. How are you, Selwyn? You're very good, Peter. Good. Now, you've just uh, just uh, before we get on to your news, just uh, the Mark Knopfler song that Steve mentioned in a text with Steve, I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Why okay, I Man. Why I Man, yeah, that's uh, from a series. Yeah, it is. Um, or Vita Zane Pet. And it was a series that started off uh, where um, a bunch of Geordies from England went across uh, to Germany in the first couple, um, couple of series um, as workers during the Thatcher years. Um, and then it went on, uh, um, uh, there were a few mini series and, and certainly long series um, more recently. But it was uh, Timothy Spall, Jimmy Nail, and um, you know, a host of others that okay. uh, really became, uh, here in New Zealand, it's a it was very, very, very popular. Mm. And, uh, yeah, one of the series, the one uh, around the Mid- Middlesbrough Bridge, um, and they were transporting it across to Arizona, and it was the big, big challenge and task. And, th- and that was the theme, uh, the Knopfler um, ch- uh, song there, the Y8 Man was the Why theme man? for that. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, it, was, it was Keza the Truckee that sent through that text with that song, so there, there you go. go. Maybe you didn't know that, Keza. All right, now, uh, you've spoken in past weeks about uh, royal issues with uh, the Nationals and uh, yeah. uh, John Key and issues there. We're going to talk about the Labor Party this week, a strategic meltdown. Oh, uh, your yeah. words on that one? <laughs> yeah. uh, the uh, Well, tell us why. There's a bit of yeah. you know, a bit of tension there. There has been. Yes, there has. Um, now, there's, there's been question marks around the Labor Party's leader, David Shearer, ever since he took over the job around just short of a year ago. Um, this, you know, he hesitates when he's on uh, television and uh, strategically he's had a few wobbles just when it looks like John Key's, po- the Prime Minister's popularity is going down and he's in free fall and you see David Shearer's big mallet come up to hit him on the head as he's going down. Down, he kind of misfires, um, and and there's been a lot of criticism about that, and a lot of desperation from a lot of people um, that would naturally support the Labor Party, who want to see it win in 2014 general election. That David Shearer may not be the man. Now there was a lot of pressure leading up to last weekend when the Labor Party had a, its conference here in Auckland um, that David Shearer really needed to step up to that podium and deliver a blinding speech. Now he 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 did that. He accomplished that, and he was well celebrated for it. That he actually, under pressure, he really delivered for the party faithful as they all gathered there. But in the wings, all the way through, has been a significant politician called David Cunliffe. Now he he is a former minister in the Helen Clark government. Um, he he represents a lot of popularity out there in the public, and he can kind of deliver and take it to the uh, Nationals and John Key in particular um, very, very easily with his um, strength, his wit and his intelligence and rhetoric. Now, the, he's always been an heir apparent or certainly a serious contender. Now, his his um, there was a, a lot of attention on David Cunliffe at the, the Labour Party conference on the weekend, um, and what it was interpreted as particularly by those that uh, naturally support the Shearer camp, is that it was like a silent challenge. And David uh, Cunliffe would not confirm that he would support his leader, Shearer, uh, when it went to a leadership vote in February next year. Mm. Okay. So that's the background to it. Yep. So there was a lot of tension, a lot of media um, play around this. Is David Cunliffe seriously... Um, undermining David Shearer's uh, reputation as a leader of that party. It was the big question. So it gets to Monday, and Shearer indicates, that's the Labour Party leader, indicates, right, I've had enough of this, I'm going to put this speculation to bed once and for all. I've called a special uh, caucus meeting on Tuesday, and I'm going to once and for all put this to bed. He kept reporting, uh, repeating. <laughs> the, the meeting comes along, Peter, and... David Cunliffe and all the other caucus members, the MPs, the Labour MPs, go into this meeting and there's quite a lengthy powwow that goes on inside there. What David Shearer did is he basically sacked uh, David Cunliffe from his economics portfolio and he relegated him right into the Parliament's dustbin, really, right in the very back bench of the back benches. Um, And he isn't even ranked with a number in the pecking order. 
now. Oh, There's okay. a lot of speculation as to whether or not that was a wise thing to do. Should he do what Mario Puzo said in his Godfather novels, you keep your enemies close? Mm, mm. Or, or do you have them estranged where they develop um, strategies to basically, once again, unpack your um, leadership as it leads into that mid-term position. So from that, uh, that uh, the uh, the fringes of the backbench potential that he could plot a comeback. Oh, yeah. You know, the, mm. that, it, well, it's going to go one way or the other. It's either the end of David Cunliffe, and he is arguably Labour's brightest and most effective politician, mm. um, or it means that he will... Uh, rise and basically take the party. Now, his challenges are that he isn't well-liked amongst his uh, ne- Labour Party colleagues, the uh, f- fellow MPs. They're the significant Sorry, Cunliffe, Cunliffe, Cunliffe or, or, uh, uh, or Cunliffe. Shearer? Cunliffe, OK. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Shearer, on the other hand, at the meeting on Tuesday, got unanimous support for his leadership, um, including the vote from David Cunliffe. Okay. Uh, so it's obviously too soon there, but it's a little bit like the Labour Party in Australia that's notorious <laughs> throughout the region for its internal squabbles. Uh, the uh, Labour Party yeah. here in New Zealand is a smaller fish, uh, but, but it's certainly uh, got a similar kind of character. Yeah, well, we've, we've recently had similar things at a state level uh, within the opposition party uh, too. So well, there you uh, go. There you go. But the, uh, the, uh, the challenger didn't get to demoted way back down the back of the bus. Uh, so. No, right down the back of the bus. Well, they're out even a pecking order ranking. So okay. that's, a, that's a real jab in the eye. And right. th- just very quickly, though, uh, with David Cunliffe, he had been most effective in teaming up with David Parker. All these Davids. Yeah, Davids are very, yeah. Yeah, David Parker was the finance spokesperson. David Cunliffe is the economic spokesperson, was the economic spokesperson. Now, they really tag-teamed and and. They were the most effective at really pulling apart the national government uh, economic plan and mm. financial plan. They've been very effective to split that team up really strategically. Okay. It looks r- rather churlish and silly. Okay. Any announcement on who will fill the uh, uh, his, his uh, Cunliffe's role as uh, uh, mm. uh, economic spokesperson? Uh, yeah, David Parker has temporarily oh, um, okay. taken over both um, with the help of another guy called Clayton Cosgrove. They're both um, former ministers in the Clark government. Okay, but, uh, but still waiting a permanent yeah. or announcement of a permanent. Yeah, there'll okay. be a reshuffle, I think, coming yep. up. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, on things uh, fiery, uh, a oh. bit of a more geological nature than a political one, uh, yeah. Yeah, you've uh, you've got another volcano getting ready to burst into life, or already, in fact, bursting into yeah. life, Mount um, uh, Tongariro. Yeah, Yesterday, around about um, just after or just before one thirty in the afternoon, the North Island Central vo- Volcanic Plateau. That's where there are three mountains all in a row: M- Mount Tongariro, uh, Mount Naruahoe, and Mount Ruapehu. And uh, Ruapehu, that was the one that really blew in the 1990s. You know, mm. big rocks and huge, huge uh, fireworks into the sky for weeks on end. Um, Naruahoe is often smouldering away itself, but Tongariro is traditionally been the, the sleeper, yeah. um, one of the, the smaller of the three. But uh, there was, it, it, it erupted earlier this year, but yesterday, just before one uh, thirty, there were school groups actually going along uh, the trail, the Tongariro Trail, and uh, it suddenly began to rumble, suddenly started to move under them. and a wow, uh, frightening and, experience. And, and, yes, and began uh, erupting around, around them. And uh, the accounts coming out of that was obviously one of, wow, shock and awe, mm. and, and then fear starting to kick in. The first, it was a five-minute eruption that sent ash apparently four kilometres high into the sky. That's the New Zealand Herald reporting that. Mm-hmm. Um, then it was followed a short time later with 15 minutes of volcanic activity. And it was thick ash that was going up. Now, scientists, Peter, have been um, warning in the past week that there's activity around Mount Ruapehu. Um, and Ruapehu is, um, when it goes, it, it, it really is significant. It, it certainly, um, you know, sends uh, things flying. Uh, so there is a lot of activity around that area. If people in Adelaide and South Australia are thinking, you know, that they're planning holidays there, just, just check to see what... Uh, what the um, New Zealand scientists that watch this type of thing are saying about 
about um, tracking through that region over the next few months. Yeah, okay. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So it's it's only been ash and so on. There's been no sort of major major yeah. er- eruptions. A um, couple of months ago, it sent rocks up yeah. and they went through roofs and all sorts of things of um, huts and uh, houses in the area, and the, and the ash was considerably thick. Uh, this isn't so bad. And I remember being down there. I might have mentioned at the time. I'm um, being down at Ruapau's um, eruption on the side of the mountain, and and when she went, uh, I remember in the middle of the night, we're sitting on the side of the mountain waiting just as journalist reporting on it, myself and the photographer, and it started rumbling and it sounded like a giant waking up, you know, with a rumbly mm. belly. And then uh, as soon as the sun rose, it was like the sleeping giant woke up and she just went off and we had to move around to the other side of the mountain, which is about an hour's drive, uh, because the ash was just coming down thick. And yeah. uh, when we're on the other side, we're up, the, up uh, near the top of the ski lift and uh, it went kaboom. And <laughs> this ash uh, 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 eruption cloud just went about... 35,000 feet into the air within seconds and then, um, the sonic wave hit and basically knocked us over. Wow. It was an awesome experience. Yeah, indeed. Obviously dangerous. Yes, yes. Well, you live to tell the tale. That's the main thing. Yeah. So we'll, we'll catch you again next week. Okay. Peter. Stay safe. Stay away from those volcanoes. Yes, yes. All right. Cheers. <laughs> bye-bye. See you soon. Bye. Selwyn Manning at livenews.co.nz for more. It's 28 past five. Get hot water anywhere you want with the Glemus Instant Electric Hot Water System. Hot water in the garage.